Hi, this is John with John's Workshop, and we're back working on the 1997 Lincoln Town Car. Last time, in the previous video, we pulled the carpet out so that we could find where the leaks are, and I'm going to show you what we found and then how we're going to seal them up in this video. We're looking under the dash on the passenger side where the leak we found was coming from underneath here and in the, at the bottom of this rubber boot right here. So there's a wiring harness here pass through and it's leaking kind of at the bottom uh, where that comes through the metal here. So right under there. And then there was a second leak under this one here where we've got a few more wires passing through the firewall. So right down there is where another little stream was coming from. Okay, the third leak is coming from on the driver's side or under the dash there. Um, you can see this is a grommet where the hood release passes through the firewall and there was a small drip coming down from here. Um, this is the uh, emergency brake cable here. So our third leak is from right there. To get to the front side of the firewall, uh, we've got to get behind this plastic fender cover. So we pull the wheel off. Um, I've just got this sitting up here on some blocks. So we can get in here and you can see there's a few nuts and things that need to come off uh, right here. This holds the uh, overflow reservoir for the coolant. And there's a couple other things in here uh, that need to come off. So I'm going to hit these with a PB blaster and uh, try to get them soaking a little bit. And then we'll come back in here and pull these out. So I'm getting the fasteners out of here. So there was an eight millimeter, a large washer up here. And then uh, up in here, there's another eight millimeter, a large washer. We had three 13 millimeters here that are holding something up on the top. I'll show you that in a minute. And then uh, here we had a couple of 13 millimeters holding the uh, overflow reservoir. So up on top, you can see we can get this kind of out of the way here. This is where it was bolted on with these two. And then this is uh, just kind of like a relay uh, power distribution box. That is now loose. But um, I think I'm going to have to take the battery out too because this uh, plastic panel kind of goes underneath that battery. So that's our next step is just to pull the battery out. Up on top of the plastic fender well, there's a couple of connectors here. You can see they're just popped in here. So that's where the this trim tool is pretty handy again here. You can just kind of pop them out uh, so there's nothing connected. Um, I've also seen that it looks like the battery tray here uh, is kind of integrated in here. So I think we're gonna probably pull uh, this bolt down here out. Uh, and then you can see up here, there's two bolts coming up from the bottom that are kind of connecting this whole thing in here. So those are gonna come out too. So this is underneath the car, underneath where the battery goes, which is here. And the underside looks like this. So this is an eight millimeter bolt here that's gonna come off. And then uh, over here, right there is the other one. Um, so that should then allow the, this battery metal tray uh, to be released. And then underneath here, there's one last bolt that you've got to get out, uh, which you can see is right here. Um, and that's just uh, an eight millimeter. And then I think the rest of this plastic uh, piece should then come out. So I've got everything disconnected from the top, I believe. And then underneath, all the bolts are out. So I think this is ready to come out. Underneath, we've got all the connectors off. So I'm gonna see if I can get this out of here by just kind of flexing it a little bit. And it's a good thing it's a warm day. So I think this is gonna flex easier on a warm day. like I still have something connected on the other side right here so I'm gonna go pop that off okay so I'm getting this kind of loose a little bit here I kind of see where I want to be over here so I like to get this all the way out of here like you can 
can see that uh, this battery plate kind of comes out with it too. This is a closer look under here after we got the plastic out and uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here and actually this, I don't know what this was, some kind of a seal or something was all sort of smashed down in here. I kind of pulled that out of there just to allow the water to drain out of here a little bit better. Um, but what we're really looking for is up here. So I showed you the two on the passenger side. So this is this is the pass-throughs right here. Um, and so somehow we must be getting water um, around here somehow. So I think what I'm going to do here is um, put some sealant on these to try to make sure that they are sealing. Okay, so we're running water on the windshield. And this is what's going on underneath here. So you can kind of see what the water is doing here. See it's kind of pouring out there. But you can see here it's getting on this, kind of the outside of that one there. It's kind of running all around this uh, metal joint here. So this is most likely the path of how that water is getting in. That gives you an idea of what's going on when the water's running uh, or when it's raining. Is it's kind of dripping in all down through here, which is fine. Uh, it's just that it shouldn't be getting into the through those grommets and then into the firewall. This is what the one wiring harness boot looks like here. You can see, you know, the rubber doesn't seem like it's in that bad a shape, but for whatever reason, the water is able to get through there. So that is what I think I'm going to put some sealant on there to try to make sure the water is not getting in through this area here. And then the same is true here. Um, just to seal that up for some extra protection. So I disconnected the connector on the inside of the car here. That just gives you a little bit more to work with here. You can get this out and kind of clean the uh, rubber piece up, plan it clean up in here because that's where that sealant is going to need to stick. Um, on this one, I just pop this little guy right here just to give myself a little bit of extra room. You can kind of push this in a little bit here and uh, work on cleaning that up as well because I put a little sealant in there uh, to hopefully stop the leaks. Okay, to seal the firewall rubber plugs, I'm going to try this. Dynaflex Ultra. This is just something I happen to have around the house. Uh, it's exterior, window door, siding and trim. And what I'm looking for is not something that's going to be super bonding, but if I have to get it off, I think this kind of stuff I could probably get off as opposed to like a, like a real serious automotive gasket uh, or something like that. So uh, I'm going to give this a try and we'll see how that works. Okay, so the plan here is just to get the caulk into there's like a little channel around the edge of this rubber um, and to try to fill that with caulk so that we've got a seal. So I'm just going to try to maybe squirt this into my finger and then see how this works. Kind of, this is going to get a little messy I'm afraid. but. Uh, essentially get it into that little channel there. Okay, so this side here was a little bit easier because it was kind of loose and I was just able to put the caulking into that ridge around the edge there. So now I'm going to push this in. Uh, there you can see it kind of coming out. And I'm thinking that all that extra caulking in there is going to do the sealing. That maybe that old rubber piece just wasn't as pliable as it was originally. And that's what caused the uh, leaking here. So hopefully with all that sealant on there, 
we won't have the leaks again. So this is what the final repair looks like. Tried to even spread a little bit on the outside of there to uh, just any drops would hit would then go running around instead of running into those uh, rubber pass-throughs. So I'm gonna try to see if this works with the hose and just see if we get any leaks or not. So with the hose squirting on the windshield, you can kind of see how things are looking down here. You know, the water down here doesn't look, really look any different. The key is going to be whether we've got water uh, on the inside of the car. Um, but clearly, the, there's water definitely dripping onto those uh, pass-throughs from outside the firewall here. Okay, so to test for leaks, what we're going to do is just use the hose on this kind of a setting here. And I'm just running it. We're checking the passenger side to see if we really did get all the leaks. And so I'm just running it down through here on the windshield. And it goes down into the cowl here and hopefully we don't have any leaks. Okay, so after sealing up these two, we put it back together and did the hose test and found out we still had leaks. So I suspect it's coming from here. So you can see now I've just sealed up around the between the firewall metal and this plastic drain. Um, so I think that if you're under here doing these two, you should do this one as well. Hopefully this will be the solution then to all the leaks on the passenger side. So the solution there was not really the solution. That last uh, caulking that I did didn't really help. So we still have a drip inside. Now we're up on top and you can see I've removed this panel here from the cowl. Really, that doesn't do a whole lot other than just filter. You can see here, it just kind of filters out um, leaves and stuff like that. Uh, so anyways, we're gonna run the hose a little bit and I'll show you where I think we're getting the leak. So go ahead and turn on the hose. The blower, I pulled out the blower so you can see, but if you look in here, you can see we get drips every so often into here. And what happens is I believe that it is leaking down the inside of the firewall there because you can see the paint color point to it here this is the firewall and we have water on the inside of the firewall there so i think that's our problem you can see how it's been getting that foam door that piece of foam there is a door that moves back and forth but it seems like the water is coming inside where it's not supposed to set up the handle a little bit but there's quite a bit that comes in there and I don't think it's overflowing anything I think it's just splashing around in there and the foam seal um, to the firewall is no longer all that great I think that's what the problem is and if you look from the top here you can see essentially the water just comes in it kind of goes over that little rounded part which is right here and it looks like it's supposed to you know drain down on, on down in there onto the other side but a lot of it gets around this corner and kind of gets in here into where that door is and you can see it gets the door wet in fact most of it just runs right around there so we may address that as well so just from that quick demonstration you can see in here uh, we've got quite a bit of water right here kind of running down and pooling up right here just from that little bit of uh, running the hose uh, and then under here you can also see this is the actuator door for that foam actuator we're talking about. This is all rusty here. So definitely a lot of water has been getting in to that box, uh, probably even dripping down here. And uh, I think it's related to that. There's the foam door. You can see it up on top there. See, without, without the blower in there, you can see right out. And I think that's where the water's getting in. You can even see it in the lower right-hand corner here of the foam where it's Kind of absorbed up in there okay so i've got this mirror in here and we can kind of see the back of the firewall in this mirror and if you look i'll kind of try to point to it here if you look right here you can see uh that's the foam there's foam insulation right in there and if the water hits the back side of this firewall after splashing around in there it just runs down there and then that foam insulation sealing the plastic is supposed to prevent it from running on into the car but i think what's happening is this foam insulation in that gap between the plastic and the firewall is just so old that it's not really doing that anymore so 
our first step is going to be to caulk that um, just to make sure that if any water does splash on the back side of this firewall here that it runs down hits the caulking and then just runs on into this black uh, plastic piece which does have a drain in it if it can get into that okay so you can see I've got the camera inside the, the little compartment here and I'm just going to try to put caulking can't really see where I am but I can feel it so I'm trying to seal that off with caulking all the way across here so that anything that hits that firewall and runs down will then hit the caulking before it hits the foam and it won't rely on that foam to seal the water out. Looking through my mirror back at the firewall and you can see I put a bunch of caulking down in there to cover the foam so if anything drips and splashes on the firewall it will run down and hit the caulking instead of on the foam and now we're going to pull the camera back so you can see what we're looking at here so we're actually looking through the blower this is where the blower is and it just gives you an orientation of what we're looking at in there so i was kind of zoomed in on the back side of that you pretty much have to do that without being able to see anything so you're kind of going by feel but then you can kind of stick a mirror in there and see if you're doing okay while i was in here i added this piece of aluminum tape you can see it right there on the top. The idea here is that instead of the water running down around this corner and then going straight down and kind of going in, this is supposed to be kind of like a little uh, deflector to try to minimize the water. So I don't know if this is really necessary, but I went ahead and added it uh, while I was in there just to try to keep the water out of that compartment in there. So this process sure takes a long time because you keep hitting the hose and then finding more leaks. And so I found here where this cable was going through this pass-through, even though the pass-through here was sealed, there's a little bit of water somehow getting through here, dripping down onto this and then passing in. There was just one small, maybe two small drops. So while you're down there sealing this up, I would recommend you know sealing these rubber pieces, which we talked about earlier, but also sealing right here this path into that rubber grommet. After doing some testing with the water flow here, I decided to bend this end of this up here on this aluminum tape. And it, now it acts like kind of a rain gutter, so it shuttles most of the water off into the back, and it doesn't end up uh, going into this uh, box right here, which is where I think it gets into the into the firewall. And, you know, we tried to seal that up, but to try to minimize what gets in there and gets on those foam doors. Uh, by doing this, I think that's going to get the water out and away from that internal compartment. Okay, so putting the liner in is pretty much the reverse of pulling it out. I just got it back in here now. But one thing I wanted to point out was uh, for all these bolts, uh, what I like to do is, um, here's a tub of axle grease. I like to kind of put a bunch of grease on there when I put them back together, and then that way... Um, if you ever go to take it apart again, it's going to be uh, quite a bit easier because it won't be rusted in there. In summary, here's where we have to seal on the passenger side. So first, around this drain up here to make sure there's no leak into back into the firewall. And then the second place is the wire pass through here around this big grommet between that and the firewall. And then next is the other grommet here um, same thing between that grommet and the firewall uh, and then finally the actual wire pass through here uh, between the wires and the rubber grommet so by sealing all of those the uh, leaks were eliminated down low but then still on the passenger side we've got a seal inside that blower housing as i showed before this is just a still uh, showing that region in there behind the firewall uh, where you've got a seal to make sure there's no leaks. And then on the driver's side, just really this pass through for the hood release is the only thing you have to seal. If you do all of that sealing, you won't see this anymore. No more water gets in. We had some huge rains over the last few days here in the St. Louis area and not a drop got in. It was bone dry. So thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful.